And welcome to William Crispin High School in Independence, Missouri. Lee Summit North and William Crispin get ready for semifinal game number one here on Spectrum News. And a good evening to you, Joe Van Amberg, along with the Hall of Famer, Michael Watson. And Michael, big game here to start uh, semifinal game number one. A couple of teams that are pretty familiar with each other, Lee Summit North and William Crispin. Yeah, two teams very well coached early season. It's a good test to see where you are. You're tired of practicing against your team. You want to get it going, and this is a good way to do it. Well, let's check out our players to watch first for Lee's Summit North. How about Bray Means, all-district selection, last year's leading scorer coming back? Yeah, Bray Means is an inside-outside player for the Broncos, really the engine for the team. The way he goes, they go, but they have a lot of great support staff as well on the floor. And on the other side for William Chrisman. How about Trey Taylor, all-conference last year, all-district as well. He's going to need to get the ball a lot today, Michael. Yeah, and he plays the point guard. We'll slot over to the two uh, as well. But he can light it up from outside, has a quick release, and has unlimited range. It's going to be a great one here for game number one, Lee Summit North and William Chrisman coming up here on the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week at the Fog Allen Invitational. And welcome back to William Crispin High School here in Independence, Missouri, getting ready for the start of game number one. Starting lineups for William Crispin, Tamarek Alanese, Mason Cates, Trey Taylor, Jameer Robinson-Smith, and Leo Gaiman on the other side, Tate Barker, P.K. Newberry, Bray Means, Quinton Human, and Trey Paulding. Lisa North starts with the basketball. Well, you heard that last name, Paulding, out there. Ricky Paulding, the former Mizzou star and Detroit Piston. He's actually an assistant coach with the Summit North. Here's Paulding to the lane, and he gets it blocked. Gaiman on the block, so it'll stay with Lee's Summit North. Leo Gaiman, one of the key players for Lee, or excuse me, for William Chrisman. Big block early. Yeah, 6'5", long wingspan, can cover the floor. Human. Good kick. Great pointer, Newberry. Hey. Inside out, they work at the Broncos. Unselfish play. Newberry from the corner, knocking it down. Lisa Medorth with the early lead. Cates, that's the coach's son right there. Alanese. Gaiman. Triple team and a tie up. Basketball will stay with Crispin. Well, you see already the quickness at Lisa Medorth has. On the defensive end, they're all locked in. See man, see ball. Taylor to inbound for Chrisman. Into Gaiman. Cates. Gaiman. Taylor. Cates for two. No. At least up north the other way with Parker. Newberry. Three-pointer off the mark from Means. A good ball movement. You see some of the North is not shy to pull that trigger. Coach Hughes have a foul on the floor. Fouls on Bray Means. Fouls on Bray Means. So one of the key players for Lee Summit North with an early foul here in the first quarter. And you see they're trying to work the ball into Gaiman. Hey! Gaiman right on cue. Makes it a one-point game. I mean, that was a la Dirk Nowitzki. Here's a steal on the play by Chrisman. The other way, three-pointer off the mark from Robinson Smith. And here comes Lee Summit North. Human short corner. Gaiman with a rebound for Chrisman. And Allen E's the other way. That's a good, strong rebound by Gaiman. Cates for three. Off the mark. Gaiman the offensive board. Both teams kind of evenly matched size-wise. Gaiman knocks it out of bounds, and it will stay with William Christmas. It's going to be about the effort and intensity. Those are two things that coaches always say you, if we, we shouldn't have to coach effort and intensity, and you see that so far from both teams on both ends of the floor. Early substitution for William Chrisman. 
Tyrone Green, the senior, into the game. Gaiman, guarded by Human. Wow. And what, Gaiman for two. What a move. A la Tyler Hansborough. Is it Hans Hansborough? I can't remember. But Tyler <laughs> Hansborough from North Carolina. That's what he looks like out there. Good job using the up and under for the bucket. It's Paulding from straight on. Off the mark, and Cates with the rebound, and Taylor will push it up for Chrisman. Ooh, get some. Almost had it. Green with some hustle. Gaiman, who's been good so far. Well, you know, Jake Cates' team is going to move the basketball. Nice. Robinson Smith with the two. Well, you see the fundamentally sound moves by Chrisman so far. Gaiman and then Robinson Smith that time coming to a stop. Beans tried to find Paulding, and it's out of bounds. It will stay with Lee Summit North. Well, you know, this, this is a tournament. It's a home game for these Christmas Bears. Check out Robinson Smith. Nice crossover. Comes to a stop. Able to get it over Paulding for the buck. This Newberry will start. Paulding. Sophomore with the turn. Tipped out, and it's William Christman basketball. And that shot didn't go for Paulding, but I mean, you saw the moves, the footwork on that on that shot. His father, a, a longtime pro NBA, and then played 15 plus years in Germany. And his family recently moved back to the area a couple of years ago. And he stepped out of bounds. Let it go over to the Bronco. So a turnover back to Lee Summit North, and it's an early three-point lead for William Christman. Lee Summit North coming off a win against Kaufman, and now a steal. Green. Taylor. Off the mark, Holding has it for Lee Summit North. Barker. Newberry for three. Yes! And Newberry has that low release point on his shot, but if he has the time, he's able to knock that one down. Taylor quickly ahead for Christman. And a steal. Newberry. All the way. Nice. Five straight for PK Newberry. Well, good job turning defense into offense for Newberry. Five quick points for him. Inside Green tied up. Jump ball. And possession arrow back to Lee Summit North. So the tide early with Christman now seems to be shifting. Well, check out this still in layup by Newberry. Good job of playing the passing lane and then allowing the defender to fly by. Great body control and finish for Newberry. Holding to inbound. Holding will bring it up the floor for Lee Summit North. Good kick. Means for three. Payow! Boom shakalaka! That's what they want to do, penetrate, kick. You work on that in practice every day. And a charge. Offensive foul and momentum all with Lee Summit North right now. Well, that's PK Newberry stepping in, showing what he can do in the defensive end. Just an intelligent heads up play. Taking the charge, giving up his body for his teammate. Only charges I ever took were accidental. I never stepped in to take a charge <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> Gaiman about had the steal. Means underneath, no. A lot of contact, but no call. Let him play. Taylor. Green. Oh, nice hesitation move. Gaiman couldn't get the tip. Means almost had it, but it's gathered by none. Taylor for three. Ooh, back iron holding with it. Newberry, double teamed. Barker, holding for three. Hey, let's go. And you got to love it when you got a coach that gives you the green light and the confidence to shoot your shot. You got to love that. And Coach Hughes, you know, Coach Robin Lucas on the bench, a uh, great player at Blue Springs South. He's a coach for one of the best Mo teams, uh, AU teams, Mocan in the area. Green for three, no, Paulding with the board. 
And Paulding will rebound and handle the ball from the power forward position for the Broncos. Read inside, Paulding, no. Here comes Christmas. Timeout for William Christman with 2.11 left in the first quarter. Lisa Menorah building a nice eight point lead over William Christman. William Christman started out on fire, but it's been Lisa Menorah since then. It's been Lisa Menorah stepping it up and really getting it done on the defensive end. We've seen Newberry step in and take a charge, but they just have active hands all over the place. If you take a look inside the huddle for the Broncos, William Christman. And one thing we, we, we didn't talk about, they played almost six straight minutes in this first quarter. That's a lot of live ball action going up and down. And Coach K said, hey, let's take a timeout, catch our breath, and, and get back out here. But Lisa Menorth doing a great job so far. Well, Lisa Menorth playing their first game of the season earlier this week against Kaufman. They actually had a day off between their last game and yeah. this game. William Chrisman played yesterday and getting right back at it today. And the winner plays in the championship game tomorrow. Well, you got young legs, man. You can play three <laughs> games in one day when you're that age. You can play right after this one, Coach. So William Christmas starting with the basketball out of the timeout. Lisa Menorth with the early eight-point lead. Gaiman. Ooh, tough pass. Taylor fouled on the drive. Well, Taylor probably had the opportunity to kick that one out to a open teammate and they get that foul on the floor. A minute 54 remaining here in this first quarter. It's been a good one. Daniel Moore checks in for William Crispin. Allen needs to inbound. Cates. Mason Cates guarded by Paulding. Gaiman, triple team and on taken by Moore. Newberry. Newberry gets the rebound, and nice. Kyrie with the finish. That was a great job staying with the play. Kyrie with the finish, and I can guarantee he's a football player. Every basketball team deserves one or two football players. Out of bounds. And it will stay with William Christmas. Check into the game for the Broncos. Number 11, Jackson Graham, 6'5", Jr. Gives them some size down low and athleticism as well. And a foul on the inbounds pass. Jackson Graham. Gaiman for three, a deep three, rolls out, and P.K. Newberry the other way. I mean, nice form, just didn't get it to, to drop. Gaiman inside out. Graham can't get it to go, and a foul against Lee Summit North. Well, Jackson Graham was on fire in the first half in that Coffin game. He had a bunch of threes in that first half to help build that lead. Trying to get started again. He can let it fly. He saw that one. No hesitation. Just checked in. He's like, I'm ready, coach. I'm hot. And there you go. Penetrate, kick. As now we've got an injured player. And that's Eddie Norton. Holding his knee, so. It will tend to him, and that's... That's unfortunate to see right there. Hopefully he'll be all right. Yeah, and no one around. He's closing out. That's unfortunate. Hopefully he, he's all right. A non-contact injury on the replay. Well, you hate to see that. Uh, Coach Hughes talking about Eddie Norton took the biggest leap, he thought, out of his team from last year to this year. They just hope that he'll be all right here. Looks like they're going to help him up.
Hopefully he's all right as we resume play. And so on the inbounds, Reed with a steal. And oh. Reed almost had the dunk. Moore with the board. Kyrie. Call him Twinkle Toes, boy, because he can move. And he was on the least seven North football team oh, you yeah. mentioned earlier. You, can you knew it. You knew it. Well, pressure is. There's Christmas working around. Game in for three. No. Tipped out. And it will stay with Lee Summit North here in the final 21 seconds. Lee Summit North with a 10-point lead here early. 10-point lead, Nick. Getting it done on the defensive end. Couple of steals. 20 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Lynn Crispin may play for the final shot here as Taylor will back it out. Williams guarding him. Gaiman for three. No. Oh, man. Lay the other way. Newberry at the buzzer. Too strong. So after one, Lee Summit North with a 16 to 6 lead over William Chrisman here at the Fog Allen Invitational here at William Chrisman. And Michael, you know, for William Chrisman, what are some adjustments you think they need to make right now? Well, I think they need to calm down. I think, you know, playing at home, still early in the season, some young players mixed in with some returners. You just got to calm down and play your game. They're getting good looks. We've seen Gaming get some good looks from three, and Taylor hasn't got going yet. They're just not falling. So what you have to do is you've got to stay mentally locked in, mentally engaged in the game on the defensive end, right? So when you're not scoring the basketball, where can I be impactful in the game? How can I impact the game in a positive manner? And that's always on the defensive end. Well, the hy V High School Game of the Week is brought to you by hy V, proud to support Greater Kansas City High School Athletics. Well, taking a look, quarter number one, Lee Summit North. And William Christman with a great start. Lee Summit North got it going, though, late and really took control of this game. What do you like about the way Lee Summit North came out and played, especially after William Christman had the early lead? I just love how they're playing defensively. They're playing the passing lanes, and they're daring Crispin to make shots from the outside, packing it in. They have a size advantage when they get those guys off the bench. But their they're big guys are agile. They can move their feet. They're also playing in the passing lane. And then they're not allowing second chance opportunities uh, from Crispin after they shoot the basketball. So just locked in. Let's see if they're able to keep it up here in the second quarter. So William Crispin starts with the basketball here as we begin the second quarter with Lisa North up by 10. Damon, Taylor. In some trouble, Heron. Tried to skip it, and great defense, just like Michael was talking about. Here's Reed again. Oh, Offensive foul. Wow. That was a great job that time. By Tameric. A line yeah, it's American Alanese. Alanese, I'm sorry, getting back. Watch him, and I mean, look at the the low coming at him. He knew he was going to take that, and he took it flush. Great job by Alanese. And Reed. Jeff Williams off the mark, and Gaiman has it. That's one you got to have. There's Taylor pushing it back up the floor and spin in the lane. Uh-oh, good song. Yeah, oh. Taylor getting it going. Put him in the spin cycle. Now Lee Summit North will come back the other way. Oh, dangerous pass there. Real tough on that sideline. Newberry had a strong first quarter. Reed. You see the difference in continuity for this Lee Summit North team, but let me hush my mouth. Will Ray from downtown, and now it's an 11-point lead, one of the largest for Lee Summit North. When shots go in, the offense looks great. And a steal. Will Ray the other way. Newberry, can he get it going again? Just off. And Gaiman has it for William Christman. Gaiman has to have seven, eight rebounds already in this first half. I mean, he's a workhorse for the Bears. Oh, drop him off? 
Almost had it. Get the Another board, put it back. Okay, big fella. So Leo Gaiman with the big two and got a whistle and it looks like a timeout on the floor. Well, Gaiman is gassed. That's because he has been working on both ends of the floor, misses the shot, stays with it. And we talked about his fundamentals, the nice kiss off the glass for the big man from Crispin, trying to keep his team in it by himself. That's a good timeout by Lee Summit North, not allowing Crispin to go on a mini run right there. Well, William Crispin, are, are you liking some of the things that they're trying to do right now? Do you think Lee Summit North still is kind of in control of this game? What are your feelings? Well, I think you got to take advantage of Lee Summit North playing their second unit. We saw their first unit come out there. They're up and down. Crispin solid on the offensive end. And if you're William Crispin, you got to take advantage of that. You got to push the ball. And like I said before, shots just aren't falling right now. But we have to take care of the basketball. Too many careless turnovers for the Bears. So I know Coach Cates is talking about that. Value in every possession because it looks like it may be a close game coming down the stretch, and those possessions are going to count. As coming out of the timeout, Lee Simmons North will have the basketball up by nine with 6.08 to play in this first half. That's been an exciting one. And Nick Williams will bring the ball up the floor. Williams, the junior guard for. Lee Summit North means their leading score from last year with it now. Gray inside, tried to find Human, got it back, and Gaiman with another rebound. Gaiman just got, he had some hands on him. Taylor, How off about the Taylor? pass. And that's where he's at his best, pushing the ball in transition. That time able to kiss it off the glass, but right back. Human on the other end with a quick answer. You can't trade buckets if you're the Bears right now. You got to get one or two stops together in a row along with some buckets. So Allen is now running point. Robinson Smith back in there. Cates. Gaiman for three. Got nice. it. And finally getting it to go down. Has a nice looking stroke to big man. Able to get that to go. That was a big shot for the Bears. Cut it to six. As we approach the halfway point in the second quarter. Means. Human. Williams. Able to keep it in. Some defense now looks like from William Christman. A block on Ray's attempt and now a foul. No yeah, jump ball. Good call. A jump ball underneath. And it will stay with Lee Summit North. Yeah, good call by both officials down low and on the outside. That's great defense by Gaiman with the block. And then watch the tie up both hands on the ball. That's Mason Cates down there getting in the scrum. What exactly is a scrum? I think it's a rugby term. Ah, look at you. Okay. <laughs> I'm here for you, Michael. I appreciate that, brother. <laughs> Williams on the miss and Will Ray with the putback. Yeah, Will Ray, big body down low, creating space for that offensive rebound. Also a football team player. Oh, you can tell. <laughs> you, you, you can tell. They just move different. They seek the contact out. <laughs> That's for sure. Taylor wide open. He's going to pull that one. How about Buck Ray Taylor? And looking just like that. Five point lead. Well, Coach Ray Hughes has got to uh, talk a little bit about this as William Chrisman has closed the gap. Let's go to Dion Clisso, third member of our team. Dion, what do you have for us? Well, guys, up until that last couple possessions, Lee Summit North did a good job of getting the ball inside and kicking out. What's helping is both teams, I think, the officials are letting them play, uh, letting them get in there and be a little physical, uh, which has really made it a very entertaining basketball game so far. Yeah, and it's definitely been an entertaining game, Michael. Back and forth, Lee Summit North, William Christman out. Maybe William Christman, as we approach halftime, getting kind of closing the gap a little bit here. Yeah, doing a great job and just staying steady, staying with it, not getting too high, not getting too low, understanding the need to take care of the basketball because basketball is about getting shot opportunities. And if you turn it over, you're not able to do that. But 
Leo Gaming, I mean, he is having a game already with 10 rebounds so far in this first half. I mean, he is just controlling the boards for the Bears. Yeah, and Coach Cates was talking to me earlier this week, thought some of the keys to this game, and especially a lot of these early games, turnovers and rebounding. Yep. Who wins those battles? Probably going to have the edge in the contest. That's always what it comes down to. You look at most, most games, most championships, it's about free throws and layups and who is able to control the boards. Coach Cates, a former player, he definitely understands that. So Williams bringing the ball up the floor for Lee Summit North. A little one three one action right now. We called this Rover back in the day. A different look out of the timeout. So Coach Case playing a little chess right now. Human can't get it to go. Taylor with the rebound for William Christmas. Yeah, it slows you down offensively when you come out and the team is in the zone and you're not prepared for it initially. And that one three one, it's like a matchup man. Taylor to the bucket. Uh oh. oh wow. Over Will Ray. Go get you some, young fella. And now, don't look now, but it's a three-point game. This was 11 at one point. The lead for Lee Summit North. Ray to try and answer on the other end. Hey, he that's what I'm talking about. Inside out. Dion talked about it in his segment. Lee Summit North started out going inside and kicking it out. Seeing it on that last play. Nice pass and nice shot by Reed. I mean by Ray, I'm sorry. Damon with the screen for Taylor. Cates, open three. No. And rebound goes to Means for Lee Summit North. Williams. They were just short on that one. And Gaiman with another rebound. Well, that's a heat check. You got to take that shot. You just made one. I, I, I get it. I understand. <laughs> and Taylor, he's getting some looks at the next level. He's one of those. What a pass. Robinson Smith with the finish. Oh, man. Way to move without the basketball. But what a find from Gaiman. Gaiman's out there looking like Jokic the Joker a little bit. Call him baby Joker. <laughs> and a steal. Taylor ahead. Robinson Smith. The pump. No. And Paulding with the rebound. Well, he heard those footsteps. Paulding coming down. Wasn't able to get him with the up fake. Means. Holding for three. Strong. And Gaiman, another rebound. Another rebound. He may have a double-double in the first half. Some players tumbling over each other on the other end. Taylor. Scoop. He got it. We're playing with him. Quit playing with him, Taylor. Oh, hit him with the oh wait. It's now a two-point lead for Lee Summit North. He just said, you know what, coach? I got the play. Give me the ball. That's the play. Give me the ball and get out the way. Can Paulding answer? He does. Great Paulding with another bucket. Steady the ship. Way to steady the ship by Paulding. Good job of moving the basketball by Lee Summit North. It's the Bears making a big run in the second quarter. Taylor, Robinson Smith. Taylor again, voted by Means. Double team. Gaiman just off the mark. Hustled for the rebound and off Robinson Smith, and it's Lee Summit North basketball. My man, Taylor, Trey Taylor, watches up and under. Nice step with the left. I mean, Little George Gervin out there with the finger roll. Quit playing with him, young fella. He's a scorer, though. Scorers have a knack of finding opportunities to get that ball up off the rim. And Taylor says, you know what? I got it, coach. I got it. Great job by him so far. Tate Barker back in for Lee Summit North running pointer in the final 36 seconds of the first half. Barker. Green point defense on him. Called it. Trey Pauling all the way. He need to just go ahead and turn that one over next time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Michael Watson was wanting a dunk. I, was, I, <laughs> I thought that's what it was. He's he, he playing with us down here. Don't play with us, little Paulding. That's six seconds. Here's Green. 
Gaiman, Alanese for three, oh. yes! Yeah. That's a big shot at the buzzer. We got ourselves a game. What a first half as William Chris been able to get a big shot to end things here in the first. Well, half. it's all about the unselfish play. Watch the penetration, the kick, and Gaiman. Oh, finally, Elanese in the corner for the bucket to pull the Bears to within three. What a first half. A lot of excitement. Both teams going back and forth. And let's go to Dion Clusi, who's got an interview with Coach Ray Hughes. Well, Coach Hughes, uh, first quarter, you guys got out to a good run there. They kind of answered your run. Yep. Uh, they changed up the defense there at the end. I know you want to penetrate and kick out. How, how have you adjusted there then, right there at the end of the quarter? Uh, we know that they were going to keep fighting. They're a well-coached team. Uh, we just got to make our easy shots. I thought we got some point blanks that we missed, but uh, we're okay. We're okay. We just got to uh, close out and convert on our easy opportunities. Defensively, we just have to close out better on shooters. All right, well, good luck. Thank you. Well, what a great first half here from uh, the Fog Allen Invitational at William Chrisman High School. That's the first half. We'll be back for the second half, the Hy-Vee highlights and the Hy-Vee stats here after the break. And welcome back. We're at halftime. William Crispin and Lee Summon North. Lee Summon North with a three point lead over William Crispin. Let's check out the Hy-Vee highlights. Yeah, great job by Lee Summon North. They came out knocking it down from three point range. Newberry got it going early from the corner. A nice job. And what about Paulding kicking it out for the three and then coming out and getting one of his own? The sophomore for the Broncos playing big so far tonight. And on the other side, William Christman, this young fella right here, Trey Taylor, I mean, whew, almost made the defender fall a little bit. Nice spin in the lane. And right here, able to finish, crossover with contact, nice kiss off the glass, and then great ball movement. And he's, that's college range right there. Knocking it down from outside. The senior getting it done so far for the Bears. And here are the Hy-Vee first half stats. And Michael, you know, some similarities between the two of them. Uh, William Crispin, three of 12 from beyond the arc. Lisa Menorah, six out of 14, pretty good for them. Yeah, Crispin weathered the storm. They were down by as many as 11 in that first half and able to just kind of hit singles, hit singles, you know, not going for the big play, but just doing it on the defensive end. We saw Lisa Menorah put together a lot of defensive stops in the passing lane, but then Crispin turned around and gave him a dose of their own medicine. Even though North has a size advantage, you see William Crispin doing a great job of points in the paint, and they're out rebounding the Broncos by four. So let's see how Lee Summit North responds in this second half after Crispin really made a great run to get back to within three. And Leo Gaiman for William Crispin has a lot of those rebounds. He's had a fantastic day, especially on the boards. And again, what a great atmosphere at the Fog Allen Invitational here at William Crispin. They do such a wonderful job with this. Leo Gaiman, team going to try and get back in this down by a few here as we get ready for the start of the second half. Any adjustments that you think William Crispin needs to make coming in to the second half? You got to get the ball to Baby Joker, Gaiman. You got to get it to Baby J over there, man. Lil Jokic, you got to. He is an inside, outside player. I know Cates has already identified that from him. The ball needs to go through him, and he and Telly need to have a two-man game for the Bears because they have an opportunity on the pick and roll to really cause damage and really put Lisa North in a bind. Who's going to guard who? Because we know Baby Joker can step out and knock down threes, and he is a monster on the board. I think he has 13 rebounds in the first half alone. And so he and Taylor need to get together and have that two-man game going. Yeah, Coach Gates thought that those two were going to be some big keys for them throughout the season. They need them to really light up the score column. And game is doing a little bit of that, but really the rebounds have been so impressive so far today. Yeah, for Lee Summit North, they're going to have to get back to what they did in that first half, really being aggressive on the defensive end. We saw Trey... Trey Reed, I mean, sorry, Trey Ray uh, go out there for Lee Summit North doing a great job defensively. 
Will Ray, I just butchered his name, I'm sorry. Will Ray, mom, I don't want no problem. But Will Ray doing a great job defensively for them. And so they're gonna get, get a little bit more aggressive on defense, like you said earlier. The officials are letting them play, uh, being physical, being handy. They're gonna have to go out there and, and play their game. Elisa Menorth uh, getting ready to take the floor once again. And this is a team again, both of these teams early season game so this is not the finished product and kind of weathering the storm a little bit you know the coaches aren't probably gonna like the execution completely because yeah. you're still really young into the season but I mean, it looks like both these teams have got a lot to work with it should be exciting the rest of this game and throughout the rest of the season well these early games are the growing pain game for any coach especially when you got you don't have a lot of returning players or starters even you're teaching, so this is where they earn their paychecks, especially at the beginning of the year, where these guys are learning how to weather the storm. They're learning how to win, you know? It's not just about scoring the basketball. They're learning to make winning plays, time score and opportunity, what that looks like. It's different in practice when you're playing the same players every day. Now we're playing different competition. What does that look like? How do we execute? How do we um, adjust during the game? You know, when we meet obstacles, how do we how do we figure those things out as a team? And so it's a great learning opportunities for those coaches when they come back in practice and say, hey, this is what we did in the game, and this is how we could we could uh, work on that and get better. Coach Hughes in the timeout huddle, or I guess the pre-half huddle in his second season, graduate from Lincoln University, and was previously the head coach at Ruskin, came over to Lee Summit North after winning three straight conference championships at Ruskin. So he's got a nice winning pedigree coming over to Lee Summit North. Teams are known for playing some really physical, hard-nosed basketball. Yeah, for sure. And look at that. It's Taylor on the, the inbound. inbound. That's a good start to the half. Yeah, what a play by Coach Tate out the half. You put your, one of your smallest guys, and you, you basically post them up. Man, and it's a great pass as well. Inside, Newman. About had it taken away. Newberry. Holding for three. Just off the mark. Who's right there for the rebound? <laughs> Leo Gaiman once again. Baby Joker, come on. Put some respect on his name, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Joker now. <laughs> Robinson Smith with the drive. No, gets his own rebound and off balance almost got it to fall. Look at look at look at Baby Yoshi with the tip out to Taylor. Taylor just off. Gaiman. Another rebound. Green fouled hard. And Green will go to the line to shoot a couple. I mean, the Joker just keeping the ball alive down here. Look at him tipping the ball. Misses, but what hustle down here. He just lays out now because he's tired. He's got to <laughs> take the break. I'm with you. <laughs> Tyrone Green, the senior guard for William Chrisman, with an opportunity to tie the game. And he does. And Lisa North had the lead for most of the first half. Now we're tied up. William Chrisman has an opportunity to take the lead since uh, first time since the first quarter. Well, you heard Coach Hughes at halftime talking to Dion, and he said, hey, they're a very well-coached team. And so when you got a very well-coached team, you know they're not just going to give up. They're going to make those adjustments. And you saw that even with the 1-3-1 one, one zone, just giving a different look to the Broncos. Uh oh Four, three. Yeah, be quiet, Michael Watson. I'm going to knock this down from the corner. That's what you do to zones. You shoot them out of them. Gaiman. Green and a traveling violation. So right back to Lee Summit North. Well, Lee Summit North is a team that returned four out of their five stars last year. Really young last year, a little older now, and another year in the Ray Hughes system. Parker just hit the three a moment ago. Paulding. Newberry. Reed. See some patience from the Broncos. Parker almost had his second three in a row. I mean, that just went in and out right there. He's right on target. He's able to knock it down. Taylor 
Means putting a lot of pressure on him. Taylor still almost got the two. Reed with the rebound. At least something north out on the break. They're pushing it. Means all the way for two. Oh, great job not putting the ball on the floor was Means. But a great lead pass by Newberry getting out on the break. Robinson Smith now running point, guarded by Newberry. A7 North, back on top by five, and a steal by Newberry. Parker, one on one. No, oh. holding almost with the big finish. Oh, wow, he went for it, though. I don't know if that was a, a design oop or he was trying to make the layup, but Paul came flying through. Almost put that one down. Green thought about it. Green, the pump. Damon Dame. trying to get the rebound, and he gets it to Green. Baby Joker keeping it alive. Taylor, Parker tips it out, and it stays with William Christmas. So just when William Crispin looked like they may be making a run. Same play, same play, out the half. The exact Taylor same play. in one. The exact same play. And it works. I don't know why they don't think that Taylor will post up. This is the first play. Take a look. This is out of the halftime and Taylor. And then it happened again. Look at Taylor. He seals the ball down low. You got to know if you're Bray Means that Taylor is going to try and do that. You're not expecting it from someone that size. But again, you got to make those defensive adjustments. And Taylor converts. Coach Case kind of looked over and gave us the shrug like, hey, they're not going to guard it. Parker. And he's got a quick five. Yeah, Parker, nice job. We can shoot it from deep. One dribble pull up for the bucket. Robinson Smith. Taylor. Another big game for him. Double team. Robinson Smith about tied up. Gaiman right back to Robinson Smith. Tough pass. Allen E's for three. No. Newberry the other way for Lee Summit North. Ray, the step through. And with the first. Ah! All right, big fella. And a timeout for William Chrisman. Well, Will Ray getting out on the break. Take a look at the big fella coming to your screen. Whoop, whoop. Nice step through with the filet finish. Let's take a look right here at that injury. Kind of twists his ankle a little bit, Tyrone Green. Did the trainer kind of tightening his shoe up a little bit. Looks like he'll, he'll be all right. Tyrone Green, one of the first off the bench for William Christman, so. Well, at least he's walking off on his own. Yeah, I hope he'll be all right. This training staff will take a look at him and Chris with the basketball back down by six. About halfway through the third quarter. Taylor with the crossover. Oh my God. And the jumper. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh-oh. Holding hit the floor hard, and he was not happy. Let's go back to this crossover. I mean, my goodness. Come here. <laughs> the pull-up. We're going to call, we gonna call Taylor Scorpion from Mortal Kombat, because that was a come here move right here. Oh, my goodness. Let's send it over to Dion here as Paulding getting ready to attempt these free throws. Well, guys, I had a chance to talk with Coach Cates, and uh, he said, really, the difference from them in the second quarter, they had some shots go down. 
Uh, he felt yeah. they were playing pretty well defensively. Uh, I told him, I said, you know, you guys were getting good looks. They were just rattling in and out. And um, he said, if we make shots, you know, they get up and down the floor, the, they're a good team. Christmas a good team. And so far, we've had a really good game. Well, we were talking uh, during the break that uh, we, Christmas struggled a little bit yesterday making shots. Yeah. Good to see those going down for them if you're a William Christmas fan. It's Taylor. Man, nice head. We'll set another one go down. Game and foul on the putback. Yeah, look at Joker. Right place, right time. I mean, he's going to have 20 rebounds for the night is over with. Easy. Incredible night on the boards for Leo Gaiman. He will now go to the free throw line. And he's a guy that likes to get in the weight room a lot. He's been pushing the other guys also to get in the weight room, get yourself stronger. And you can tell it's paying off for him underneath. Oh, yeah. Creating space. When the shot's going up, he's doing his work before the shot. Just getting as much leverage as he's can, he can. But he has nice hands. He, he the, doesn't see the ball bounce off his hands. When it hit, it sticks. Gets the second one, so it's a four-point game. Lee Summon North. Newberry for three. No. Cates with the big rebound. And we may have a foul, and it is on Newberry. So fourth team foul against Lee Summit North and one more and William Christman will be shooting two shots. It's Taylor bringing up the floor for William Christman. Trying to make this a one possession game. Nunn tried to get it inside. Here's gotta Taylor. Have, gotta have a better angle for that pass. Cates. Nunn again. Alanese. Cates. Tough shot, no. Here comes Reed. Holding. Underneath, what a shot! Ain't no way. <laughs> All right, little P. That was a nice scoop shot from Trey Paulding. That's one of them shots you're coaching. Like, don't shoot that. Good shot. Good shot. <laughs> Good shot. Believe me the whole time. <laughs> it's Cates. None. In the paint. Blocked by Reed. Gaiman. With the spin. Short. And Reed with the rebound. Oh, Newell. nice lead pass. Ray, the football players with the connection. Oh, what a pass. Nice outlet that time from Reed to Ray. But take a look at the, the shot by Trey Paulding. Oh, my gosh. He was on the other side, but so long and athletic. Able to scoop that one up and took the best possible angle. But look at this outlet pass. From Reed to Ray, he's leading him like, go get me an assist, man. He low-key almost blew it, though, Will. <laughs> Make that layup, man. But great job with Lee in North. Weathering the storm, William, William Christmas coming out, running, but able to extend his lead out to eight right now. Well, and if you're Coach Hughes right now, what do you want to see your team continue to do to try and build on this lead? Well, defense to offense. That's what we've seen them do. They have created turnovers that have led to easy buckets for the Broncos, and again, it's the same story the first half for the Bears. You have to take care of the basketball. You gotta value every possession. And that was a much needed timeout by Christman to regroup, understand, hey, it's a lot of time left in this quarter. Let's get this back to at least a four or five point lead and not extend it. So Heron throwing the ball in, Alan Ease has it, and William Christman has it the other way. Just under two minutes left in the third quarter. Taylor. Gaiman. Three-pointer, Taylor fouled. And Taylor will go to the line to shoot three. That was good patience by the Bears. Not forcing the shots, you see how physical Lee Summit North wants to play. 
That time fouling on the three-point shot. It's now Taylor with three opportunities. One of the leading scorers making the first one. Trey Taylor, the first team all-conference player. 15 points for Taylor today, so far. And he will have one more. And also, Lisa the North with five fouls. William Christman will be shooting two free throws the rest of the way. Strong on the third one. But they get it right back. Loose ball, out of bounds, and it's William Crispin basketball. Good hustle on that play by Trey Paulding. He tested why it was out of bounds first. So Taylor, screen from Gaiman. Two man game. Three pointer, Heron, no. Read the board. Deep pass, Paulding. Parker. Paulding. Fighting against three players, almost had a putback. Yeah, he's the, the size on the, on the boards for the Broncos. Almost coming up with that one. Let's see how the Bears respond with under a minute remainder in this third quarter. Now it is. Heron. And a foul. So now Heron will go to the line to shoot two. Foul was on Will Ray. Foul is on number 15, Will Ray. That's a 15 foul shoot two. Well, this is one of the new rules in high school basketball this year. It used to be 17 fouls yeah. and a half, but now it is quarter by quarter, five team fouls, and you are shooting two free throws the rest of the quarter, and then after each quarter, it resets. Yeah, resets, and a lot of fans don't understand that new rule. We got a lot of questions about that so far. I like it. I'm just waiting for them to put a shot clock in high school now, and then we're talking money. <laughs> As Heron makes the free throw. So now it is a five point lead. Heron getting his first points of the night. Another key player off the bench for this William Christmas basketball team. They're trying to get above 500 on the season. Reed with the rebound. Holding. Barker, Newberry, nobody there out of bounds to win Chris. Yeah, you don't need to force it if you leave something in north. You should have took the time you had. You only needed one shot. That time playing a little too fast. Substitutions as Daniel Moore. Engineer Robinson Smith coming into the game for the Chris. Robinson Smith. Guarded by Green. He's got some room off the mark, and Reed with another rebound. And Reed was going deep, and he went all, out of bounds. He's always looking to outlet it, outlet the pass like a, a la Kevin Love. That time a little too much, and a lot of time for the Bears to operate. If the double Taylor out of bounds, not even allow him to catch it. He's got PK Newberry on him right now. Final nine seconds of the third quarter. Lee Seven North leads by five. Taylor with five. Taylor with the screen. Taylor, good kick, kick out. More for three. No. That's a good play, though, at the end of the quarter. So 44 to 39 after three, Lee Simon North maintains the lead. And look like William Christman may be able to may take the lead from him. They just were right there, but Lee Simon North able to weather that storm like you were talking about earlier, Michael. Yeah, they, they definitely did a good job of that, but Christman not going away. They're, they're just being steady. You know, steady goes the ship, doing a good job of taking care of the basketball when they needed to. 
we we'll actually see a little bit more of the two-man game between Gaiman and Taylor. I think that's when they're most effective. And for the Broncos, have to do a better job of controlling tempo, knowing when to move the ball, knowing when to go fast, knowing when to slow it down and pull it back and get a good look, good opportunity. So I think this is going to be a really good fourth quarter. The Bears only down five after being down three at the half. The Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week is brought to you by Hy-Vee, proud to support Greater Kansas City High School Athletics. Uh, here at William Crispin High School and Lisa Menorth getting the edge in that third quarter, and they have the edge on the scoreboard 44 to 39. Seen a lot of great individual performances by players on both teams. And you know, for Lisa Menorth, William Crispin's really kind of had the best of them since around 2016, four and two record against them. And Lisa Menorth may be trying to change that a little bit too. They've been playing in the districts, been playing here at the Invitational. At least some North opportunity maybe to try and take one from them. Yeah, them. I mean, they, they, you want to win every game you, you play, and the William Christman, you want to defend home court. Graham short on the three. Good pass. Good. Inside means. Oh, man, but what a look from Kai Reed. Finding means nice, nice assist. As Green is back into the game. Good defense from Means. We'll take a look. No one from Chrisman went and collected this, but good job by Ky Kyrie. Nice bounce pass for the bucket. Gaiman. And they ran the same play again with Gaiman this time, and he gets the two. I mean, if it's working, it's working. But you got to make an adjustment if you leave some in North. That's three times they run the same play. Out of bounds. Pulling on the other end, and one. And that was a good call by the official. Alanese a little bit too far underneath the basket. Take a look at it right here. Good thought, but he's a little too far underneath the basket before Pardon takes off. And you see Trey excited, opportunity to complete the three-point play. So Paulding. Makes it an eight-point game. As Taylor bringing it up the floor, one of the leading scorers for William Christman today. And a little miscommunication on that pass. Turnover back to Lee Summit. Yeah, that's, you don't need that if you're Christman right now. Every possession counts here in this fourth quarter, especially being down eight. So holding the inbound for Lee Summit. And Newberry will run point. Lead. Graham, he'll try again. Ooh. He hit that one. Graham, who had a big night the other night against Kaufman with a three there. Yeah, only a junior, 6'5", with a nice looking shot from outside. It doesn't matter where he is. He's not toying that three point line. He's a few steps behind it. Gaiman working on Paulding. Cates for three. Good yes. kick. Good kick, and that was a much needed bucket for Christman. Cates knocking it down from three. Now the lead is eight for Lee Summit North. Means holding. Reed underneath oh. offensive foul. Alanis got that one. He got that one. It's, it's only because Kyrie lowered his shoulder into Alanese. You don't have to be set to take a charge, but whenever you lower your shoulder and initiate the contact, the officials are more apt to call that. Well, Coach Gates will love this stat, too. He took three charges in the first game. He's their guy He's taking there. the charges. Yeah, it's not me. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ooh. Big screen. There. Oh! Taylor blocked! Robinson Smith fouled, and he will go to the line. Yeah, it's not, it's not, re but did you see, did you see how high Will Ray got up to go get this? Oh, my goodness. I don't know if that was coming down or not, <laughs> but if the official didn't call it, it didn't happen. But my man, he got some bunnies out there. Don't let the, don't let the big taste spoo you. My man can get up. 
Throw some big free throws here for Robinson Smith. Missed the first one. So he'll get one more here. Robinson Smith, the starting point guard for William Crispin. Oh, just off. And here comes Lisa Menorth the other way. Means. Calding. P.K. Newberry. Graham. He's got back on track with that last three-pointer. Means, oh, just off his hands and out of bounds. Back to Chris. Yeah, you don't have to force that when they could Trey Paulding. And you see his dad, Ricky Paulding, telling him the same thing. Look, don't force it. He's not there. Bring it out. And a foul on the inbounds pass. Now we're going to start playing. Foul by Jackson Craig. That's already three fouls against Lee Summit North early here in the fourth quarter. So two more, and William Crispin's back in the bonus. Robinson Smith. As they were winning a backcourt violation, but his entire body was not across half court. So yeah. no backcourt violation. You, you can cross into the front court as long as you still have a foot in the back court. Okay, same spot, same Thanks. result, baby. Let's go, Joe. Wow. They, he's their three-point specialist and a timeout for Lee Summit North. The Broncos lead 52 to 47, but Michael, like you said, William Christmas still hanging around right now. Well, they're weathering the storm, I mean, Lee Summit Norb doing a great job, but when you got wide open opportunities, Kate's knocking down the first one, and they're almost the identical spot. Sets the screen, he pops, and no, and Graham doesn't get over the screen in time. He's able to knock it down. Has a kind of an unorthodox release, but who cares if it goes down? Well, folks, we're having a lot of fun with this one, and we got another one coming up after this that should be really good. Truman and Olathe North. Truman just coming off of a big win against Jefferson City, and Olathe North defeating Van Horn last night. Olathe North, also a lot of guys that maybe get some looks on the next oh, level yeah. as well. We got a great matchup coming up, and that'll be coming up for you here at 8 o'clock right after this game. That's going to be a good one, but this is – Shape it up to be a good one. 521 remaining in this game. Can Chrisman continue to answer offensively and get stops from the defensive end? And really, Lee Summit North, can they not shoot themselves in the foot with those turnovers at the most inopportune time? Well, Lee Summit North. Chrisman as we get reset here. 521 left. It's 52-47 Lee Summit North and Lee Summit North basketball. As Newberry will run point. Momentum starting to go toward William Crispin. Oh. Out of bounds. And it's William Crispin basketball. And there you go, Joe. And that's a set play out of the timeout, but just not a crisp enough pass. Ends up fumbling off of his feet. So now here's Taylor, and one of the leading scores for William Christman. Gaiman with the screen. Gaiman screens hurt. <laughs> you can tell. Talked about spending a lot of time in the weight room. There's a lot of benefits for those guys. Cates, oh, he wouldn't oh, shoot it. Yeah, he caught that with clean. That was going up. Allen ease the spin. No. And Reed with another rebound and another deep outlet. Graham. Baseline, offensive wow. foul, and Alanese has another charge. Alanese, I mean, he is not afraid to step in front of a freight train. Take a look at it right here. A good kick, but look at Alanese close out. Ooh, man, it's, that's a bang bang play. We get the benefit of replay. And if this was right there, he calls it. But Alanese, I mean, he's gonna need some Epsom salt. After this game, Cates, Gaiman, 
Paulding with good defense, but Gaiman still got it to go. Gaiman's a grown man out here. Baby Joker's a grown man. I mean, he put that shoulder into Paulding's chest like, I need this space right here, man. Excuse me. Nice baby hook as well. I'm it telling you, he looks like Joker out there. <laughs> and he's made it a one possession game. Paulding on Herod and Paulding fouled. Take a look at baby Joker down low. He's looking to kick initially, then he says, you know what? I got it, coach, clear it out. Boom, give me that space. But the soft touch, and we talked about his hands, the way he rebounds the basketball. Soft touch around the rim, whether it's rebounding, and that time with a nice hook, but Paulding, last foot on the floor, he drove and was able to draw the foul, the foul, he go to the line to shoot too. So Trey Paulding making the first one. Holding the sophomore. Talk about a guy who's really improved over the summer. Not surprising again, you're talking about the pedigree, his dad, the star at the University of Missouri back in the early 2000s. A ball. Newberry strong. Graham with the rebound. Holding. Newberry, two points. Nice job by Paulding. Keeping his foot on the gas. Finding Newberry for the bucket. Now the lead is six for Lee Summit North. Means nearly a steal. And a carry. Turnover gives it back to Lee Summit North. Yeah, that was a good, good call by the official. Actually did it twice on that same play, but the official got him the second time. Now Newberry, Lee Summit North with the lead and the basketball. It's an important possession for the Bears. They gotta get a stop. Almost had a steal. Heron with some good defense, but Newberry able to collect. Newberry, Means, Paulding, Right back to Means, almost at it. Pulling, fighting for the board. He and Gaiman. Jump ball, possession arrow to William Christman. What does it mean to you? Oh, man, you got to love it. Two of the better players are going after that ball. It means something. We know Ricky P's not going to give up, and Baby Joker isn't either. Yeah, I so saw Paulding and uh, Gaiman uh, go up to each other afterwards and say, nice job. Yeah, good sportsmanship. Let's go over to Dion. Dion's got an update for us. Dion, what do you have? Well, on those last free throws, uh, Coach Case was kind of chewing on the officials. He felt like Lisa North was jumping in the lane early. And as with four fouls here with the Broncos in a six-point game, if they go to that double bonus, that new double bonus, which I love, by the way, uh, <laughs> Uh, that could be key. I mean, you don't want to be giving away extra free throws, especially now that he's kind of got in their minds about it. And Lee Summit North, one foul away from putting William Crispin in the double bonus as Crispin breaks the press. Damon, every possession so important now for both of these teams. Taylor oh. blocked by Bowling. Okay. Boy, you got to love the intensity that Trey Pauly plays with. Take a look at it right. He comes off his man like, uh-uh. Not tonight, Taylor, but. Taylor rolls out and Reed a strong rebound. Yeah, I thought Taylor got fouled on that one, but no call. The officials have been letting them play all night long. David about had a steal. Lee Summit North up by six. Ray off balance. Traveling, Traveling violation. Well, you know what? The officials are letting them play on both ends. A lot of contact. They're holding their whistle. They're telling them to get in the weight room, young fella. Robinson Smith. Robinson got to put that ball in his left hand. Gaiman, Cates, Taylor. 
Game in the turnaround. No, holding with the rebound. That was a good look at the bucket as well for Gaiman. We know he can knock that down. Minute 50 remaining in this fourth quarter. And a timeout for Lee's Summit North, 55-49. Michael, you talked about both these teams able to kind of weather some storms here. Lee Summit North weathering William Crispin. William Crispin did that for yeah. a little while. And now it seems like Lee Summit North may be able to kind of weather the storm here. And they've had a couple of decent possessions. They, they really have, and they've done well defensively. Even though Crispin's missed a few shots, they've done a great job of not allowing second chance opportunities after those initial misses. So Lee Summit North right now up six with a minute 50 remaining. You still want to play basketball. You don't want to just play not to lose. You still want to play to win. And so you look for opportunities for backdoor plays if they become available. But again, with no shot clock in high school, you can literally hold the ball for the rest of the game if you so choose. And if you're Christman, you got to be aggressive on the defensive side. You got to make the official make the call if it comes down to it. But it can't be because of lack of effort. You have to go for every skill that you can and trust your teammate behind you to make up for what you can. So the final minute 50 of this contest coming up. It's been a good one. William Crispin started off with the lead. Lee Summit North has had the lead most of the way. Crispin was able to get really close to taking the lead here earlier in the second half, but Lee Summit North kind of keeping him at a distance for the most part here late, and now Lee Summit North with the basketball. And Michael, when do you start thinking about fouling if you're William Crispin? You've got three fouls to give before uh, Lee Summit North is in the boats. Well, it depends on how well North is shooting the free throws here tonight. Right now, you want to rely on your defense. Try and get a steal if you can. That means you've got to have ball pressure. There's a foul by Gaiman. Coach Cates wanting a carry. Yeah, he definitely carried. And he hooked. <laughs> so that is now the third team foul. As Ray will inbound for Lee Summit North. And the winner of this game will play in the championship game tomorrow. Newberry. Holding. Guarded by Taylor. That's good defense by Taylor up top. And a foul on Allen Ease. That's team foul number four. So one more, and Lisa North will be shooting two free throws the rest of the way. Well, now you're looking at that foul situation of putting Lee Summit North at the line and making them make free throws. If not, they're going to play keep away. So you got to be aggressive. I will be sending double teams right now, run and jump. That's a travel. Yeah, see, you're beating yourself on that one. You don't even need that. So traveling will give it back to William Crispin with a minute 22 left. Down by six. So just a two-possession game. And it's Taylor with the basketball. It's a two-man game. I'm bringing, there you go. I'm making Joker up. I'm making him play. Cates. Allen Ease. He can shoot it as well. Taylor. Off balance, his shot got redirected mid-jump. Yeah, it did. That's good defense by Newberry. And a foul by Taylor on Newberry. So now PK Newberry will go to the line to shoot two. PK Newberry with the seniors on this team. Was their other leading scorer from last year? I mentioned Bray Means, but. Newberry also getting his points and getting that first free throw. It's important to be able to knock down the free throws at the end of the game to secure wins. And Newberry, he wants to be at the line. He wants this opportunity. He makes it an eight-point game. Now William Crispin running out of time. Puts the ball. And now timeout for William Crispin with 42 seconds left in the game and down by eight. 
Michael, if you're William Crispin right now, what's the strategy? Well, you got to try to get something on the on the score. It doesn't have to be a three. It could be it could be a two. It doesn't matter. But you got to get some points on the board if you're Crispin. If you're Lee Summit North, you got to play without fouling. Move your feet, and if they get a shot up, rebound the ball, not allow a second chance opportunity. And what has impressed you about uh, Lee Summit North? You know, obviously the free throw is there to extend the lead, but what's really working for them down the stretch here to keep William Crispin from taking over this game? How hard they play. I mean, they're just flat out tough on the defensive end. And I think that happens, that helps when you have a couple of football players down there anchoring down low in Reed and Ray for uh, Lee Summit North. And for them to finish this game out from the free throw line, they're going to get fouled. Can they continue to make free throws? It's a, not a lot of time left for the eight-point lead. And so if Chris was able to get a score here, it's a different ball game to cut it to a two-possession game. But if not, it's going to be tough for them to pull this one out. So big possession here coming out of the timeout. Lee Summit North, a 57-49 lead. Final 42 seconds of this one. And again, just a reminder, we've got... Olathe North and Truman coming up next here from the Fog Allen Invitational. As Taylor with it. Got to get his quick shot up. Gaiman. Taylor for three, blocked. And Reed has it. And deep pass, Polding. Yeah. Trey Polding with the jam. Holding just impressive slam. Yeah, the athleticism look cockback action right there. After the blocking, Coach Gates is upset that there was no foul on the shot attempt, I think from Taylor. Or maybe it was Newberry pushing through against the screen, but Coach Gates is unhappy with that no call. Now Lee Summit North with a 10-point lead here late. And at the moment, looking like they will be playing for the championship of this tournament tomorrow. Unless William Crispin can make a miraculous comeback here in the final 22 seconds. It's, that's going to be a hard comeback to make. That's going to be almost impossible in the 10 seconds. I mean, down 10 with 22 seconds. Especially the way Lee Summit North plays defense. I can't see them giving up that many points in that short amount of time. But Christman had their opportunities tonight getting to within three even and taking the lead. But not just not able to hold the lead against the Lee Summit North team has been playing very well defensively. So Lee Summit North with some pressure. Robinson Smith all the way lays it in. Holding, quickly fouled by Taylor with 11 seconds left. So now Paulding will go back to the free throw line. Well, Trey Paulding probably isn't going to surprise a whole lot of people. Played a lot his freshman year as well, as did a lot of these younger players for Lee Summit North. And one of the statistical categories he led Lee Summit North in last year, charges. Charges, hey, whatever, whatever it takes to stay on the floor. Wouldn't have been me, no. <laughs> Coach, you don't need me for that. That's, that's not my strength. That's not my gift. You're not going to run into me for free. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. It's holding strong in the second. And Newberry with the rebound. And with eight seconds left, that will do it for game number one here in the semifinals. Coach Hughes just took a big, deep breath. A tough game, well-played game by William Crispin and Lee Summit North. And it goes to the Lee Summit North Broncos 60 to 51. As that, it was a fantastic game for game number one of our semifinals. We'll have game number two coming up here on the Heidi High School Game of the Week.
Y'all gone? And we're back here at William Christman High School. Fog Allen Invitational. Lisa McNorth defeats William Christman 60 to 51. What a contest here in game number one as William Christman starting out strong, but it was Lisa Menor that took control and took the victory and will play in the finals tomorrow. As this was the Hybe High School game of the week, game number two coming up next here on Spectrum News. We've got Olathe North and Truman coming up next. And if it's anything like this, it should be a great one. Stick around, folks. We'll be back shortly.